R. Ask Reddit, asks, what was your scariest, a second later and I would have died, moment. I passed out at work and came around in the hospital. They diagnosed a bleed on the brain and eventually decided to drill a hole in my skull to drain the fluid. Just as they were about to put me under. The phone rang. It was the head of neurology. I actually had a burst aneurysm. According to my doctor, I would have probably been dead seconds after they started the surgery. Wow. You are one lucky soul. If you don't mind could you explain to me as to why you would have died? Sorry I don't know much about this kind of stuff. I did some volunteering abroad in a place that had a shit ton of feral street dogs. Usually they minded their own business and were easily scared away, I tended to carry a piece of rebar in my backpack for this purpose. But occasionally they would gang up and maul people. Generally kids and old people. One night I got woken up by the sound of a bunch of them barking and howling, I wouldn't have minded except I also heard the sound of a woman screaming. I ran out into the street to check it out. Turned a corner and saw the biggest fucking pack of them I'd ever seen, like 30 dogs, all circling around this lady. I started yelling and throwing rocks thinking they'd scatter, which is when the whole pack immediately turned their attention towards me. They were coming at me with their teeth bared and their ears back and I remember being really intensely aware of the thought. Okay, I'm going to fucking die right now. It was at that moment that a dude in a rickshaw came tearing down the road. Flashing his lights and honking. This made the dogs bolt. Driver saved my life. Or at the very least prevented a wicked bad mauling. It was a really great affirmation about how most people will do what they can to help you when you need it. I was working on a pipe crew in 1998. We were installing a large concrete vault in a pretty big hole. I'm standing in a ditch about 6 feet deep marking grade while the excavator operator is digging. So to the front of me is a large excavator bucket. Itself weighing hundreds of pounds and backed by powerful hydraulics and thousands of pounds of steel armature. And behind me is a solid concrete wall about a foot thick. And the ditch is only a few feet wide and too tall for me to jump or climb out of with any kind of speed. Suddenly the excavator spins to one side and the arm snaps out to full extension with full force. And the operator shuts it down. The bucket missed my head by about a foot. He climbs out of the machine, visibly shaken, and tells me that something has failed on the machine and the arm wasn't supposed to have done that. So as he's been digging he's been noticing that ever so slightly there's a bit of a delay between his inputs and the machine's actions. And in the moment before failure he just felt something wasn't right and tried to pull the bucket in when it didn't seem to want to. He turned the excavator, just in case, and that's when the arm extended. Had he not, I would have been crushed to fucking death. There were two other excavator operators on that crew. And they were basically idiots. Had one of them been with us that day, I'm sure I'd be dead. Outside my college dorm my freshman year there was this stoop that was half under the building. Half out from under it. The building was 18 stories tall. So I'm sitting out there sitting on the steps, not under the building, and I get up for no real reason and walk under the building. As soon as I get under the building, a huge sheet of glass falls right where I was sitting. Some idiots were messing around on the 11th floor and knocked a 10 by 9 window pane out of its mooring. Your spidey senses started tingling. On the 16th of December 2004 I was with a friend having a beer in a bar on the Koh San Road in Bangkok. Thailand. It was the last week of my bumming round the world and we had a decision to make. Do we go home for Christmas or spend it on the beach in Phuket? Neither of us had been to Phuket and we thought it would be an awesome end to living out of a backpack for the last 18 months but on the other hand Christmas at home with the family was also appealing. So we flipped a coin and went home to the UK. Flipping that coin a second earlier or later could have sent us into the path of the 2004 Boxing Day Tsunami. Dot. Who? Who are you? Rick. Rick Shaw. I fix problems. Edit. Shaw Industries appreciates your kind donations to the crime-fighting cause. They call me Rick. Rick Shaw. Otto Rick Shaw. I couldn't afford a Volkswagen. 
Thus, Otto. Dot. Coming soon to a theater near you. The explosive new thriller from Quentin Tarantula Rickshaw. Driver. My friend and I were taking an elevator down to the cafeteria in our dorm in college. For some reason, we were arguing about something when the doors opened. So we hung back for a second. Then the elevator dropped two floors with the doors open. I still hate getting in, out of elevators and I do a weird running start every time. Edit, happened in Canada, was an old building, elevator, 1950s, second edit. We were in the elevator when it dropped. More terrified of it getting sliced in half aspect than the drop. Oh fuck that. When I was in middle school I called my mum on my cell during lunch because my head hurt so badly I couldn't move, she was one on speed dial. Well the nurse came and brought me to the office for a checkup and some pain pills while I waited for my mum, we didn't live close. Nurse said no fever, and to take me home and put me to bed. My mum watched me get into the truck and decided that maybe we should go to the hospital to be safe. By the time we reached the hospital, it was further than our home, my temp was at 104 and I was incapacitated. I had meningitis, if we went home and she put me to bed like the nurse suggested. I never would have woken up. Edit for detail. For those who keep asking, speculating it was viral meningitis, the less severe form, but it progressed very quickly. I had no headache when I arrived at school. By lunchtime I couldn't move on my own and I couldn't see because light was too bright. The nurse came to get me and I didn't have a fever. After waiting for my mum 10 minutes and the 20 minute drive to the hospital and 10 minute wait at the hospital it was at 104. Yes we told the nurse after. But there was only some of the symptoms when I left school. She never gave me or my mother advice again. Just told symptoms and gave pain meds. I was walking into a Miller's outpost, tells you the time period, and the M from the sign above the store fell down and hit me on the shoulder. It was a big glass sign. One moment sooner and it hits my head. Because it drew blood, the store offered to give me any item I wanted so I wouldn't sue. I chose an awful red cardigan. I was 16 and dumb. Damn it you should have sued then you could have bought the whole store. When I was about 9 or 10, I was in the basement helping my grandma do laundry. She had a big braided rug on the floor and I was bouncing all over the place. I was wearing socks and jumping on and off the rug. She bends over to get something out of the dryer and reaches across the rug to grab something. I realize what she's reaching for is a snake. Just inches between the two of us. I yell at her to stop. We both scream and the snake quickly takes on an aggressive posture. I run outside and grab a broom and my grandma starts beating the poor thing to death with it. Grandpa hears the commotion and rushes downstairs and delivers the fatal blow. Turns out that little nope noodle that snuck into the house was a venomous copperhead. A couple months ago I was in a head-on collision with some dude on crack driving down the wrong side of the road with his headlights out. I was going probably around 50 before I saw him, speed limit was 55 so that's my best guess. Saw him with a second or two of reaction time. Managed to brake hard and swerve over only bad enough to total my car. But I still walked away with nothing more than a sore neck. If I hadn't seen the dude I don't doubt that I could have died or been seriously injured. My pet peeve is people driving without their lights on. I understand that you can see what's going on around you because it isnt quite dark out. But nobody can see you. Turn on your lights people. Also don't smoke crack. Drugs are bad mmk? Dot. When I was in junior high I was carpooling with another kid and her mom. For a reason I can't fathom she decided to race a transit train hoping to get across the tracks before the train stopped traffic. She gunned the car. I was in the back seat screaming no. She hit the train. Because I was in the back seat I was injured the least. I had a pointy piece of metal pierce through my jeans and flesh until it hit bone. Had she been a second faster the train would have hit us broadside and killed us all. Dito answer the questions. This was 1980. She was not charged or sued. It was labeled an accident. She and her daughter suffered broken bones. Lacerations and concussions. Because of the parental acrimony I couldn't be friends with the girl anymore. The family moved away before the end of the school year. I know at the time her mom was still not working. 
I'm not sure if she ever went back to work. Clearly she had or had developed some kind of mental or emotional problem which the accident probably made worse. I wondered if she was an alcoholic who began day drinking. But I never mentioned my suspicion to anyone. I needed crutches for a few months. How crazy is it to think someone's entire life, at that moment, rested in a coin toss? What's the most you've ever lost on a coin flip? In Universe 1, that's where their story ends. Call it. I don't know. I couldn't say. Your spidey senses started tingling. Pizza time. You're, like me, single quote dot. Ah Rosie. I love this boy. Went to a corner store for a drink. Literally two minutes after I left someone robbed it and shot the cashier and another person in the store. Edit. Well this blew up. Wow. You are one lucky sob. Well, other than the entire aneurysm thing. Yeah I think I'm fine here with my lack of luck and brain aneurysm. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe to support the channel. And above all, have an excellent day you marvelous people.